Use your napkin, please, Mr. Benjamin. Okay. The last time you had a woman. Good night, Grandpa. It was, um, my sense of smell was keener, my hearing more acute. He looked at me. Welcome to Screen Recaps, and today we are going to be recapping the movie The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. An elderly woman lies vulnerably in a hospital bed as Hurricane Katrina hits New Orleans. A younger woman crosses the space between them, desperately trying to console her. The old woman, ready to let go, has a brief recollection of a familiar story. A visually impaired watchmaker in New Orleans has a son who has been deployed to the battlefield. When his son left, the watchmaker devoted himself to creating the town's most prominent clock. Four months later, he received a letter informing him that his son had died in the war. Grief-stricken, the watchmaker decided to reverse engineer the town's clock to commemorate all the lives lost in the war, wishing he could turn back time to keep their children alive and bring their sons home. The town remembered the clock as the watchmaker's parting gift, as he was never seen again. The elderly woman, Daisy, asks the younger woman, Caroline, to fetch a book from her suitcase. She asks her to open the book and read through its pages. Caroline finds several memorabilia attached to the diary and reads a last will and testament. The testament contains no possessions of wealth but revelations to Caroline about a man named Benjamin. When the war ended, the families of the dead soldiers mourned, but the end of the war was also celebrated by many in New Orleans. Amid the rejoicing crowd, a man sprints nervously towards his house. He arrives home to find his wife dying after giving birth. The ill woman asks him to promise to show love and affection to their child before she passes away. Thomas approaches the crib, leans over the crying baby, and feeling nauseous at the sight, jerkily picks him up and runs out of the house. He intends to drown the baby in the nearby lake, but is stopped by a guard who shouts and runs after him. Thomas hides in an alley and loses the guard. He places a piece of cloth in the baby's swaddle and leaves him on the steps of a well-lit house behind the alley. A couple is sweetly talking outside the house when an old lady interrupts their moment. The woman follows the old lady inside, but the man drags her back, mindlessly stepping down the stairs. He almost crushes the baby but quickly lifts his foot to avoid it. The woman opens the swaddle, revealing the oddest baby the two have ever seen. They gasp in horror and amusement. The man urges her to leave the baby but the woman picks him up and carries him inside. She places the baby in a drawer in her room and continues assisting the elderly in the shelter. She contacts a doctor to examine the baby. The doctor diagnoses the boy with cataracts, deafness, ossified hands and feet, and arthritis, declaring that he is not a newborn, but an old man deteriorating towards the grave. Despite the doctor's warning that not everyone is meant to survive, Queenie feels a deep pity and decides to keep him. Queenie carefully brings the baby to the shelter where elderly people gather and names the little boy Benjamin. Benjamin finds a home as Queenie raises him in the shelter. Growing up, Benjamin spent the early years of his life thinking he was in his twilight years, much like the other residents of the shelter. He was the playful young man confined to a wheelchair, his limbs barely able to move. Queenie stood by him as he aged into youth. One night, Queenie took Benjamin to a faith healer to pray for her to conceive a child and to lift what she believed was a curse from Benjamin. The healer asked him to rise from his wheelchair, but Benjamin fell. He managed to rise again and took tentative steps. The healer collapsed and died in joy at Benjamin's victory that night. The shelter had regular visits from families for birthdays and funerals, and Benjamin witnessed people coming and going, wondering why death hadn't taken him yet. Benjamin befriended a dwarf who took him on train rides and to parks. The dwarf left him alone in a forest where Benjamin spent the night walking himself home. Benjamin thought it was one of the best days of his life. On Sundays, families of the elderly residents visited the shelter for Thanksgiving. One elderly woman introduced Benjamin to her granddaughter, Daisy, a charming girl with blue eyes and auburn hair. Benjamin fell in love with Daisy at first sight. After serving Thanksgiving lunch, Queenie announced she was expecting a baby. While Benjamin grappled with this news, Daisy began to open up and play with Benjamin. One night, they lit a candle under a bed in the basement and shared secrets. Benjamin admitted he wasn't as old as he looked, and Daisy believed he was different from the others. Daisy's grandmother caught them misbehaving and scolded them. When Daisy left, Benjamin continued to bond with the older residents. One lady taught him how to play the piano. As time passed, Benjamin noticed more changes in his body. One day, 
he visited a port with an elderly man and was hired to work on a boat. The work at sea excited the unusual Benjamin. He grew close to Captain Mike, who eventually discovered Benjamin was still a virgin. Captain Mike took Benjamin to a brothel, where they drank liquor, shared stories, and were entertained by women. Despite Benjamin's peculiar appearance, a prostitute eagerly took him, only to be surprised when Benjamin did not lack sexual vigor. He became a regular guest at her establishment. On his way home from the brothel, a car stopped beside Benjamin on the sidewalk. The driver invited Benjamin into the car and introduced himself as Thomas Button. They went to a luxurious bar and discussed Benjamin's condition. Later that night, Thomas took Benjamin home and asked if he could visit him again. Daisy visited another Thanksgiving and spent the day with Benjamin on the tugboat. Captain Mike brought the boat to life as Benjamin wished. One day, Benjamin's elderly friend passed away. It was then that he realized his life was passing differently from anyone else in the shelter. He affectionately bid farewell to Queenie and the other residents of the shelter, promising to send Daisy a postcard from wherever he landed. His life at sea was long and eventful, but Daisy made sure to send him a ladder after every postcard. Meanwhile, Daisy progresses in her career as a professional ballet dancer. Benjamin and his crew continue to visit brothels and bars whenever they dock on land. On one trip, Benjamin stays at a hotel where he meets Elizabeth and her husband Walter, who happens to be a spy. One night, unable to sleep, he strikes up a conversation with Elizabeth. They find solace in each other's company on countless nights, meeting in the hotel lobby when Walter is absent. Benjamin falls in love with the married Elizabeth. Benjamin confides in Daisy about his affair. Despite Daisy's significant career progress, the news breaks her heart. Benjamin spends many nights with Elizabeth, but their affair comes to an abrupt end when Elizabeth stops meeting him in the lobby. Benjamin learns to cope with losing Elizabeth as war breaks out back at sea. The crew prepares for salvage operations, but their tugboat becomes caught in military crossfire. Their captain and some crew members are killed, and the tugboat is left in ruins. Miraculously, Benjamin survives and bids farewell to the friends he lost aboard the tugboat. He returns home to the shelter and finds Queenie happily greeting him. Despite the sorrow at sea and the deaths in the shelter, both are immensely grateful yet sorrowful at the same time. One lonely morning, Daisy visits the shelter. She hugs Benjamin, who realizes that Daisy has transformed from the girl he left behind into a beautiful woman. They spend a night reconnecting, and Benjamin finds himself falling in love with the graceful and talented Daisy, who kisses him passionately before the night ends. However, she leaves disappointed when Benjamin adamantly rejects her advances. The next night, an old friend, Thomas, visits the shelter and takes Benjamin to dinner, revealing that he is Benjamin's father. He shows Benjamin around the Button Mansion and shares an old photograph of Benjamin's mother, Caroline. Confused, Benjamin leaves Thomas's house but returns later, and Thomas takes him on an early morning trip to the lake where he peacefully passes away. Benjamin travels to New York to see Daisy's ballet performance. Once again, he falls in love with the graceful Daisy on stage. After the show, he visits her backstage. Benjamin becomes jealous and leaves the after party when a friend kisses Daisy on the lips. Daisy tries to chase after him, but ultimately leaves after hearing Benjamin's indifference to her boyfriend. Benjamin spends his days touring on his motorcycle and fixing things in the shelter. One day, he receives a heartbreaking letter and rushes to a hospital in Paris. Daisy has been severely injured after being hit by a taxi days earlier. Benjamin wants to take her home, but Daisy asks him to stay out of her life. Heartbroken, Benjamin copes with his pain through countless one-night stands. One day, Daisy reconnects with Benjamin, and they make love that night. They spend years passionately loving each other in various places and weather conditions. However, Benjamin's condition begins to complicate their relationship. Daisy worries about Benjamin's aging process and their future together. Despite her concerns, she continues to love him deeply. The news of Queenie's death deeply affects both Benjamin and Daisy, but they eventually move on with time. Benjamin sells his father's mansion and chooses to spend his remaining years with Daisy in their own duplex. Daisy experiences great pain from losing her youth, but she promises Benjamin to embrace aging as it comes. She opens her own ballet school and reveals to Benjamin that she is pregnant with their child. Benjamin becomes increasingly concerned that their child may inherit his condition or that he may not be able to father the child at all. Daisy reassures him, promising to make things work for their family. Nine months later, Daisy gives birth to their first child and names her after Benjamin's mother, Caroline. Caroline continues reading through the diary, 
discovering Benjamin's regrets and the complexities of his disease. Benjamin spends the rest of his life traveling to different places in vain. One day, the teenage-looking Benjamin decides to visit Daisy and Caroline, only to find that Daisy has remarried Caroline's father. Daisy and Benjamin spend their last passionate night together in a hotel. Years pass without seeing each other, but Benjamin leaves a diary for Daisy. In his final years suffering from dementia, a young Benjamin plays a familiar tune on the piano. Old Daisy cares for the demented Benjamin until the Louisiana government replaces the town's watch. Oddly enough, Benjamin's forgetful and agonizing years come to an end. As Hurricane Katrina devastates New Orleans, Caroline finishes reading the diary. The story of Benjamin and the reverse-engineered watch comes to a close as the city floods. <laughs>